In this lesson, we are going to learn about matter. And we are going to learn specifically how to categorize matter. First of all, matter is anything that has mass and volume. To determine if an object has mass, we can use an electronic scale. For example, I have an electronic scale right here. And we have a very elemental form of matter, in this case, copper. And know how copper has mass because we have the mass of 2.0 grams. But if we look at a smaller scale, we can have a smaller piece of copper. Look how small piece of copper, in this case, has a mass of 0.4 grams. But then we look at another small piece of copper. Notice how we can see right away that this object takes up space. We can see the different coppers comparing to the background or the measuring tray, but in the end, it doesn't have any mass because our scale has a limitation in terms of how precise it can be. It can only measure to the tenth of the grams. But if we have more precise instrument, we can see that this, of course, has mass as well. So be careful, just because a scale tells you there are zero grams doesn't mean an object doesn't have mass. It also depends on how precise the instrument is. We can determine if an object has mass using a measuring instrument that measures the mass of a substance. Now what about volume? We go back to copper. In order to determine an object has volume, and volume is basically how much space an object taken over. So if we can look at this, notice how copper is very distinctive against the background because it takes up space. Because if an object doesn't take up space, we cannot see it. And if we look at this tiny copper in here, of course, this one take up more space, while this one take up very little space. But in the end, it's still taking up space. So therefore, they are matter. So again, matter is anything that has mass and take up space or volume. And matter can be divided into two distinctive categories. The first one is substance, or sometimes known as pure substance. But the word substance itself already identified that it is pure, 100% of its kind. Then we have mixture. So mixture is basically a mixture of substances. Let's look at the category substance. Again, the word substance also means pure substance. And in order to be pure, you only have one type of substance. And there are two different pure types of substance. One type of substance is called element. An element is basically a type of atoms. And you all familiar with the periodic table. Here are all the possible elements that we have today. There are only about 118 types. For instance, we just look at copper. That's the element copper we just look at. And another example is aluminum. Here I have the aluminum tray. It's made of purely aluminum metal. So again, all the elemental substance on the list on the periodic table. And of course, the element is a type of substance that identifies only one type of atoms. Basically, you only have one of its kind. If we look at this aluminum tray, it is not made from a single atom of aluminum. But this piece of aluminum right here is made from more than many trillions of aluminum atoms. Even just this copper right here. This piece of copper is made from many more trillions of copper atoms. So we will look at that more specifically in later units. But both of these are elements in terms of elemental substance. And of course, we can look at elements in terms of molecular model. For example, I have this black atoms right here that represent carbon. Then I have the red one represent oxygen, and I have the white one represent hydrogen. So these are all basically 
example of elements, which in this case we have hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. But in most cases, the hydrogen and the oxygen, they don't exist by itself. They exist in terms of pair. They are bonded together. So what we have here is H2O2. But in the end, they are still elements as a type of substance because you only see one type of atom. In this case is hydrogen. And in this case is oxygen. And if we look at carbon by itself, it just be carbon. So be careful. Just because it has two atoms of hydrogen doesn't mean it is not an element anymore. Again, it is the number of types of atoms. In this case, it has to be one in order to be an element. Now let's look at compound. If it's not an element, it must be something else. And a compound is basically consists of two or more different types of atoms. Again, it has to be two or more. In this case, we look at the example of hydrogen gas it is an element. But what happened when we have oxygen and hydrogen combined together? We have water. This is H2O. So basically H2, two hydrogen, and O is the oxygen. Notice how in this case, it is a compound because we have two different types of atoms. The first type is hydrogen. The second type is oxygen. And then if we look at other substance in this case, this is CO2, carbon and two oxygen. This is carbon dioxide gas that we breathe out. And this is the pure water that we drink. Notice how carbon dioxide has carbon and oxygen. So two or more different types of atoms, carbon and oxygen. Where in water we have oxygen and hydrogen. So when we look at substances, we need to determine if it's an element, in this case, only one type of atoms, or it is a compound where it consists of two or more different types of atoms. Now, another common example of compound is NaCl. This is sodium chloride, which right here, we can see that the table salt right here. Let me put it in here so you can see very differently. So that is sodium chloride. One last thing about compound is that the atoms in a compound, they are bonded together. That is, they stick together and function together as a unit here with a very unique chemical properties that are very different from oxygen or carbon. Now let's go to mixture. Mixture, what is a mixture? Of course, a mixture is consists of two or more substances. The main differences between a mixture and a compound is this. In this case, a mixture is consists of two or more substances that are physically, not chemically, but physically mixed together. In this case, it is chemically bonded or mixed together. Notice how it is very difficult for us to break it apart because of the chemical bond that's connecting the carbon and the oxygen. Now, where if I have a mixture where it is two or more substance that mix together, in this case, I can have this right here. Notice how I can physically blend them together. I have hydrogen gas, I have water, and I have carbon dioxide. I can mix them together physically. And I can physically separate them very easily. And when I separate them, notice how carbon dioxide separate as a unit, and hydrogen and water separate as two separate units. That's what the term physically mixed together mean. So that is at the molecular level. And at the macroscopic level, here I have a tray which consists of aluminum, copper, and sodium chloride. Notice how they are physically mixed together. And of course, I can physically separate them out. Very difficult, but I'll try. There you go. So I separate the component. 
or in this case, the substances, copper, sodium chloride, which is a compound, and aluminum, which is another element. So that is a mixture. Now, a mixture can be categorized as a homogeneous or heterogeneous. So it's said again, homogeneous and heterogeneous. Now, think of the prefix homo, that is the same, and where hetero is different. So we know something has to do with the same in a homogeneous mixture, and hetero is something that has to be different. And what does that mean? In a homogeneous mixture, the substances that are physically mixed together is uniform throughout. That is, they are the same throughout. What does that mean? They look the same throughout. For example, if we look at this beaker right here, okay, and if we add some water in here, and in this case, I have Costco water, and if we look at the label of Costco water, and if we look at the ingredients in Costco water, we have purified water, which is H2O, then we have potassium bicarbonate, sodium bicarbonate, calcium citrate, sodium chloride, and magnesium oxide. All of those substances are in this mixture of water right here. But if we look at this, people just say, hey, it's just water, which is H2O. So that's not really true. So in this case, homogeneous mixture is uniform. Basically, it looks the same throughout. We cannot identify those substances separately. Another example is this. We notice in the label it says sodium chloride, right? So how does that work? Creating homogeneous mixture. So to create this homogeneous mixture, we can just add in the sodium chloride. Notice how we can see the sodium chloride very distinctly. But what happened when I stir it? Notice it is completely gone except for the bubble. They just physically blended together in a way that we cannot see the different part anymore because it is uniform or the same throughout. In this case, we have something very specific. It is a solution. When we have a solution, it is a liquid homogeneous mixture. Okay? Where in this case, if we have... So the word solution is basically describing a homogeneous mixture in a liquid form or state of matter, where let's go back and look at heterogeneous. Again, hetero is different. That's the prefix hetero. In this homo is the prefix that means same. So in this case, if we look at heterogeneous mixture, heterogeneous mixture, everybody say heterogeneous mixture. And that is, we see something different. What is different? That is, we see the different substance in this case, I have aluminum and sodium chloride. Notice this is one substance as the sodium chloride compound and aluminum as the element. We mix them together. Look, they physically blend together. And then we can add in another part, which is copper. Now, we have three substances that mix together. And notice how it is very easy to identify the copper, sodium chloride, and aluminum. In this case, it is a heterogeneous mixture. We can see the different parts. To look at another example, in this case, the same solution, which is a liquid homogeneous mixture, let's make it into a heterogeneous mixture. I can add in the copper. Now we can see the copper inside this mixture. Another way of making this more heterogeneous is that I have oils right here. I have vegetable oils, okay? Look at a microscopic scale. And we know that oil doesn't mix together well with water. Look what happened when I put oil in there. Can you see that? Look at the oil. They are completely different than water. So in this case, we have a very complicated heterogeneous mixture. But in the end, it is a heterogeneous mixture because we can see the different parts. So this is how we classify matter. Matter can be grouped into pure substance or substance that are either element or compound. Or if we mix two or more substances physically together, we can have homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture. 
when a homogeneous mixture is a liquid form, we have a solution. 